We're in the midst of a market transformation. Uh, we've evolved from an agricultural age to an industrial age to an information age, and now we're entering into a connected age where we're transforming from supply chains to ecosystem commerce, leveraging the Business 4.0 technologies that comprise the connected age. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi, I'm Rich Sherman. Uh, I'm a senior fellow in the TCS Supply Chain Center of Excellence and Global Supply Chain Practice. And uh, I've been in the supply chain uh, environment for close to 40 years now. So uh, I've been around the block. Uh, I've uh, been a team leader in developing the original SCORE model, uh, committee leader for several industry initiatives, including in efficient consumer response and collaborative planning, forecasting, and replenishment. Uh, I've had senior positions in a number of uh, technology uh, companies, and I published a book on supply chain transformation, a practical roadmap to best practice results. So uh, please join me in taking a look at uh, some of the challenges that we're facing in today's marketplace. Uh, we're in the midst of an omni-channel revolution. Uh, the market is quickly transforming itself uh, to be able to connect to anything, everywhere, anytime, uh, and it, it's got to be delivered today. Uh, everything is connected. Uh, it goes beyond uh, business to consumer. Uh, it crosses borders, markets, industries. Uh, everything that can will be sold online and bought online, and customers are going to ask for it to be delivered uh, to suit their personal requirements and needs. So uh, omni-channel fulfillment uh, is basically uh, changing the game and uh, giving us uh, some quite a challenge when we look at our uh, supply chains. Uh, the 4.0 technologies that are driving change, uh, we're seeing more and more personalization across the channel, so more personalized content, pricing offers, uh, ease of accessibility and availability, uh, hyper-location services, so I know exactly where everyone is at every point in time. Uh, we're seeing uh, some significant uh, uh, developments in technology. Uh, artificial intelligence is actually coming of age. Uh, machine learning is becoming ubiquitous. Uh, and uh, we're seeing more and more augmented realities with uh, voice-powered commerce, chat boxes, immersive technologies, uh, wearables. Uh, we've got Apple Watches that are monitoring our, our biometrics. Uh, it's not going to be long before the consumer uh, purchase before you do. So uh, we're seeing some major changes in, in terms of how we go to market with our products and how we deliver those products when we get there. Uh, when we look at the impact on supply chains, we're really transforming today from uh, a linear, traditional supply chain, uh, generally inflexible, subject to delays. Uh, when you think in terms of linear uh, movements and physical goods, uh, you're prone to amplification, time delays, and the traditional bullwhip effect. Uh, what digital technologies do are provide us with uh, a new means to adapt uh, to change in the marketplace. They're non-linear, uh, omnidirectional, real-time. Uh, the industrial internet, the internet of everything, if you will, provides real-time data analytics and collaboration to support new models for omni-channel digital connected commerce. So when we think of an enterprise supply network, supply network we're thinking about digital connected commerce where again, everyone is online, everyone is real time, everyone is connected to everyone. And so this transformation, if you will, uh, is a result of what we like to call our business 4.0 technologies. Uh, as we began the session today, we talked about the transformation from an agricultural age to an industrial age, to an information age, and to what I called in my book, uh, stage four is the connected age. Uh, we refer to it often as Industry 4.0 or Business 4.0, uh, but the reality is, is we're seeing new technologies 
that are basically beginning intertwined uh, in a human machine interface and it's, it's really transforming uh, how we look at the supply chain. And when we change the technologies, when we change the capabilities, when we change the market ecosystem, we're also transforming behaviors. And so when we look at Business 4.0, we're looking at the opportunity for big data, the Internet of Things, uh, AI, machine learning, uh, that allow linkages and cross-selling, which make it an imperative for businesses to look well beyond. Uh, we're also looking at driving mass personalization. Uh, digital technologies enable us to uh, provide customization uh, at scale. And so as uh, some Internet uh, people have said, that we're moving from a 20th century where we had dozens of markets of millions of consumers, we're moving into a business 4.0 environment and a new connected age where we've got millions of markets comprised of dozens of consumers. The other thing that Business 4.0 technologies give us is visibility and the capability to now not only embrace risk but also mitigate risk. And so we're able to take a lot more opportunities to be able to present new ideas, new things, and innovation in the marketplace. And all of this begins to leverage a connected ecosystem. So when we look forward, we have to think beyond a supply chain and look at market ecosystems as a network of networks. And so when we look at the market ecosystem, we're looking at a core enterprise supply network, which is part of a network of networks that connect to enabling networks, that connect to supporting metrics, and at the end of the day, begin to actually connect competitors' enterprise supply networks uh, to one another. So we're now digitizing the entire market ecosystem, which gives us the capability to introduce new types of optimization, synchronization, and orchestration to move goods in profitable and efficient means across this uh, global network and global uh, ecosystem uh, to create exponential value uh, in our marketplace. So let's, let's take a look, if you will, at a, at a couple of the kind of transformative technologies uh, that enterprises are embracing. And we're going to look specifically uh, at the digital twin and at control uh, towers. So basically the convergence of these 4.0 technologies are enabling us now to create uh, digital mirrors of ourselves and be able to implement control towers for the efficient flow of goods throughout that ecosystem. So when we're looking at ecosystem thinking, we're looking at a highly complex market ecosystem which addresses supply chain digital twin and digital towers. So current market ecosystem comprises the total market flow of goods, information, cash, and capital combined with the emergence of an omni-channel commerce that makes it even more complex to view. So to address this complexity, companies need to explore new strategies, such as digitization as a supply chain digital twin and a network control tower, which in turn uh, enables the enterprise supply network with connectivity for visibility and optimization to the flow of goods. So let's first of all, let's start looking at the digital twin. Uh, achieving excellence with the enterprise supply network digital twin means that we're going to uh, leverage business 4.0 technologies to transform to connected commerce and be able to facilitate digital collaboration and visibility internally and externally. So we map our physical processes, identify all of the data points within those processes, identify the information impact on those, and create a digital enterprise architecture which basically mirrors our physical enterprise uh, architecture. So to compete in market 4.0 ecosystems, it's imperative that we leverage digital technology to mirror those business processes both internally and externally. We've got to be able to enable the digital twin with real-time data collection for cognitive analytics that harness the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to achieve operational excellence to compete 
in a business 4.0 market ecosystem. Some of the technologies that we have seen emerge over the last few years, uh, we're looking at an Internet of Things with sensors and monitors, location-based and hyper-local services, uh, autonomous operations, uh, we're seeing more and more capabilities for uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, autonomous replenishment, uh, autonomous planning. Uh, so this capability to harness cognitive data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and immersive technologies is giving us new capabilities that were heretofore uh, virtually impossible for us uh, to control. Uh, if we take a look at a control tower, uh, think about the ESN control tower the same way you would think about an aviation control tower. So when we look at control towers, we're looking at individual airports that have an air traffic control tower that give them the capability to manage, monitor, and control inbound and outbound flight traffic. Uh, they control all of the individual air traffic as it enters into their airspace boundaries and it integrates to an air traffic control system that crosses the boundaries of the airspace of all of the airports to be able to get visibility and control over air traffic on a global basis. Well, if we think about a supply network and if we think about an enterprise control tower, the enterprise control tower gives us the capability to monitor, have visibility to, and control inbound and outbound material flow paths and loads within the enterprise airspace. It controls the loads within that enterprise supply network, but it really doesn't provide visibility or control over other ecosystem enterprise supply networks. So I really don't have visibility to all of the traffic in my ecosystem. I only have visibility to the traffic within my enterprise supply network. To enhance visibility and optimize the control tower capabilities, I have to recognize that an enterprise supply network is a node in a network of networks. So what I have to do to address supply network or omni-channel complexity We've got to enable and implement control towers to enable our enterprise supply networks with connectivity to trading partners for visibility and to optimize the flow of goods within our ESN. But as we do that, we recognize that we now need visibility to the flow of goods outside of our enterprise supply network. So the enterprise supply network is simply a node in an ecosystem supply network of networks. So if we think about that network of networks, we're now beginning to think about ecosystem commerce. And we need to see, we're beginning to see the emergence of what we refer to as ecosystem commerce platforms. And ecosystem commerce platforms are multi-enterprise supply chain business platforms. Uh, Gartner calls them multi-enterprise supply chain business platforms, ironically, uh, but that's kind of a mouthful. So I, I, I think it's a lot easier to think of it as an ecosystem commerce plan, platform, a platform by which I can conduct and manage my enterprise supply network within the context of that market ecosystem. So, for example, if I'm shipping product from Austin, Texas to Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm in an omni-channel environment where people aren't ordering truckloads of product, they're, they're ordering cases or eaches uh, of product, I have a lot of less than truckload shipments and loads going from Austin to Boston. Uh, I also have competitors and or other participants in my ecosystem that are also shipping goods from Austin, Texas to Boston. If the ecosystem commerce platform has the visibility to all of the loads and all of the orders in the ecosystem, it can begin to consolidate orders and loads in order to meet the overall needs of the ecosystem as a whole. So as the Japanese like to say, no one to cooperate and no one to compete. We don't compete on the highway, we compete at the consumer at the point of demand. 
So let's optimize the flow of goods from its source to its point of demand to provide competitive benefit and cost savings to the entire ecosystem as a whole. And so Business 4.0 is all about connectivity. Uh, some examples of ecosystem commerce uh, platforms that are emerging, uh, we've got, according to Gartner, the leaders in the space, E2Open, InfoNexus, One Network Enterprise, SupplyOn, uh, some of the challengers are OpenTex, uh, Test Square, uh, Amber Road, which was recently acquired by E2Open, uh, and, and BlueJay. Uh, we also have procurement collaborative platforms such as Ariba, Coupa, Oracle. Uh, so we're beginning to see the ESNs emerge and mature uh, out of the management of electronic transactions into total ecosystem resource manning, uh, planning, and uh, uh, leveraging that 4.0. So when we look at an ecosystem commerce platform, uh, we're looking at uh, platforms that collect, consolidate, aggregate, and federate uh, data uh, for cognitive analytics within uh, uh, that ecosystem, which enable us to overcome uh, issues of changing demands, resource constraints, flow bottlenecks, capacity utilizations, supply management, variability, uncertainty, uh, et cetera. So uh, when we look at uh, ERP 4.0, ecosystem resource planning, uh, we're looking at the evolution from material requirements planning to manufacturing resource planning to what we're very familiar with today, enterprise resource planning or ERP, but in the future, we're going to see applications deployed on the enterprise ecosystem commerce platforms that provide ecosystem resource planning and optimization across that entire market ecosystem. So when we look at ECP-based ERP 4.0, when we look at ecosystem commerce, we're looking at higher levels of external and internal market ecosystem visibility, uh, better optimization and synchronization of ecosystem flow of goods, and lower cost and complexity of integrating enterprises to the ecosystem and overall cost benefit to all. And so as we look out to the future, we're looking at democratizing commerce with eco ecosystem commerce platforms and facilitating global commerce that includes competitors uh, and an industry marketplace at scale. So. Uh, we're going to be looking in the future at digital communities of commerce, uh, citizen uh, role development, uh, citizen developers. Uh, so we're looking at some major changes uh, in how we go to market in the marketplace. With that, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, I'd like to direct you to our Join the Conversation flow. Uh, you'll be able to uh, add or ask questions uh, within the chat box, uh, and uh, we'll provide feedback uh, and questions. And uh, what I'll do is I'll collect uh, the uh, questions from you and uh, be able to uh, uh, answer them accordingly, and uh, I'll read the question out so that everyone knows what the question was and uh, what the answer is. So thank you very much. and. Uh, I uh, look forward to uh, addressing your questions. Thank you, everybody, for uh, the uh, attention to uh, the presentation. Uh, I'm now going to entertain uh, some uh, questions uh, from the audience. And uh, of course, the, the first first question is is not uh, not unexpected. Uh, the uh, audience member says, "How do companies get started on their journey to ecosystem commerce and resource planning?" And, how many companies are, are implementing ecosystem commerce strategies? Uh, interestingly enough, 
uh, uh, we've developed a, a five-stage maturity model uh, to achieve uh, ecosystem commerce and, and leverage uh, the ecosystem for ecosystem uh, resource planning 4.0. So uh, at stage one, uh, we mentioned earlier uh, that, that companies need to digitalize, that they need to digitize and digitalize. Uh, and at stage one, it's all about digital uh, transformation. Uh, it's master data management, uh, understanding uh, what, what data I need uh, to manage my uh, enterprise supply network, uh, it's digitalization, uh, where I'm actually identifying what type of data I can collect uh, that supports my business processes. And uh, quite frankly, we find that most companies uh, are really struggling with stage one. They're, they're still uh, coming to grips with, with what digitization means, what digitalization means, uh, and how they go about uh, digitalizing uh, their process. Uh, the kind of early adopters uh, have done some digitalization, uh, and as a result of that, uh, we find a number of companies engaging in connected commerce. They're, they're setting up uh, supply network uh, collaboration. Uh, they're linking to customers and, and their suppliers. They're, they're linking to their uh, ESP or LSPs, their logistics service providers, uh, to manage the execution. Uh, in many cases, uh, a lot of these companies have engaged in EDI for many years, so they're already connected uh, to uh, an ecosystem commerce platform in one way, shape, or form, if, even if it's just in the simple transmission of orders and advanced uh, shipping notices. Uh, some of the more sophisticated users uh, in the uh, connected commerce world uh, are, you know, actually doing load tendering and dispatch and managing transportation, uh, execution and transactions. So we, we've got a number of industries uh, that have a lot of electronic connectivity uh, at, a, at a scalable uh, is, is size. Uh, what, what companies are beginning to realize and where the innovators are today uh, is at stage three. And at stage three, uh, the enterprise realizes it is no longer a linear supply chain. Uh, they realize that, that they're really part of their, their, they really are an enterprise supply network uh, where all of the participants are nodes in that supply network. And here's where they're beginning to develop uh, control tower technology. Uh, they're getting end-to-end -end visibility of material flow paths. Uh, they're beginning to collect data uh, and use that data to support cognitive analytics. Uh, they're regularly engaging in network redesign and network design optimization. Uh, they are full well uh, recognizing the Internet of Things and it, its potential for uh, creating the data lakes uh, that can be leveraged uh, with uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. Uh, they're doing uh, track and trace on an end-to-end -end basis. And, you know, if you look at the food industry, you look at the pharmaceutical and life sciences, uh, there's governmental regulations that mandate track and trace. And it's virtually impossible to do on a manual basis. It really has to be uh, digitalized. So uh, a lot of the early adopters are kind of being forced to be early adopters uh, in order to e reach that regulatory climate. But uh, we're seeing, you know, several companies, uh, certainly the Gartner Top 25, uh, are in that stage three level of maturity uh, where they now view their uh, supply chain as an enterprise supply network. Uh, if we if we take a look at stage four, uh, it's really in, at this this point in time that they've got the track and trace, they've got the control tower, they've got the visibility. Uh, they are uh, implementing process uh, automation, and they begin to realize, wow, uh, we've got some issues here. 
Uh, we really need to engage more actively in communities of commerce. Uh, we really have to uh, leverage the market ecosystem and engage in ecosystem commerce. And they're beginning to collaborate uh, more for enterprise supply network uh, orchestration uh, and, and looking at their data lake in comparison to the data ocean that the uh, e-commerce platform uh, manages and maintains. And so when we, when we have that level uh, of maturity that they really understand ecosystem commerce and how material is flowing throughout that entire ecosystem, they begin to realize we really need ecosystem resource planning. We need ERP 4.0. And the platform providers clearly understand this and clearly get it. Uh, they're deploying more and more application functionality on top of their platform that gives them the capability to leverage that federated ecosystem visibility, that federated ecosystem data, and they can begin to optimize the entire ecosystem. And when we do that, what we're doing, uh, what we're giving companies the capability is to manage last mile costs to scale. And we're beginning to combine loads with everyone in the ecosystem, not just within your enterprise supply network. And so when we get that optimized ecosystem management, when we get that optimized ecosystem view, we can now realize greater cost savings. The carriers buy in because the carriers see it as a means to optimize their capacity utilization and be much more efficient from a backhaul perspective and a routing perspective. And so when we get that ecosystem resource planning, we get the ability to somewhat democratize material flow paths in such a way that we provide lower cost to everyone, to the entire community, and the community shares in the benefits among all of those parties. So it, it, it really provides uh, companies uh, with a capability to, to do things that they, they really never thought possible. So um, I, I think we're getting close to the time here, but I, I, I clearly believe that uh, as more and more companies, as the uh, early adopters and early majority begin to achieve stage three maturity and begin to recognize that they are an enterprise supply network, not a supply chain, that will really be able to make the leap uh, to ecosystem commerce, ecosystem resource planning, and truly be able to implement uh, cognitive autonomous supply network and the cognitive autonomous supply management. Uh, and I, I think it's kind of interesting. If you think of cognitive autonomous supply management, that's kind of CASM, uh, C-A-S-M. And really what we have to do is make the leap and cross that chasm uh, from the innovator in stage three into stage four and stage five in order for uh, us to be successful in the future. So I, I want to thank uh, everyone uh, in the audience. I, I want to thank you for your participation today. Uh, if you're looking at the recorded version, uh, I hope you're having a watch and, and listen uh, party and inviting your neighbors and friends together because uh, I, th I think we're about to enter uh, an even more exciting time uh, in supply chain management. It's, it's always been fun, uh, but it's really been a, a management by fighting fires. And I, I think that as we get into ERP4, ERP 4.0, uh, we're going to have the capability to snuff out the match before it turns into a fire and, and certainly be able to uh, prevent forest fires uh, going uh, forward uh, into the future. So uh, I would invite, uh, I'm not sure if there's uh, anyone else that has any questions. We may have time for one more question. Um, okay. And, uh, I guess with that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day, and uh, I'll give everybody back a, a minute of their uh, time. So uh, thank you again for attending, and I uh, hope this has provided value to you.
and uh, please uh, feel free to uh, send uh, any further questions or messages or uh, get in touch with me to expand on any of the, the presentation agenda items that we've had today. Thanks again. Bye, everyone.